everybody in the UK should assume that they're going to be vitamin D deficient at this time of the year. For the next three months, you're going to be at risk of being deficient. You get vitamin D in some foods like oily fish, but mainly from the sun. And because we don't get enough from daylight in the UK during the colder months, the government recommends taking vitamin D supplements in winter. We'll get on to how much you should take and whether it can protect you against COVID-19 specifically. But first, how does vitamin D help you fight infections? To find out, I've been speaking with Martin Hewison, Professor of Molecular Endocrinology and Specialist in Vitamin D Research at the University of Birmingham. The active form of vitamin D, which is actually a hormone, it's a potent regulator of cells from the immune system. So it, it does two things. Firstly, in the innate immune cells, these are the cells that encounter an infection in the first place. There, vitamin D promotes antibacterial and antiviral mechanisms that can help to eradicate the infection. As well as protecting against the onset of infection, vitamin D also helps if you get an infection by working with what's known as your adaptive immune system. There, vitamin D does something different. It acts as an anti-inflammatory agent and it stops these cells from being too inflammatory. Inflammation can be good, in terms of eradicating an infection, but if it carries on for too long, it, it can damage tissues um, and then ex make the disease worse. In a way, you can see that vitamin D do does double duty. It's very attractive because it both could protect against infection, but also prevent the damaging effects of the immune system um, if you do get infected. Studies in recent years have shown vitamin D can protect against infectious diseases like colds and flu. The data have quite powerfully um, indicated that if you took vitamin D supplements, you, you were protected against colds and flu. So of course, with the COVID-19 um, pandemic, people have taken that interest and extended it to COVID-19. Studies have found people who are vitamin D deficient are more likely to get infected with COVID-19 and suffer with more severe symptoms. Yet the most recent government-led review of the existing research shows there's not yet enough evidence to promote vitamin D for the prevention or treatment of COVID-19. However, with what we know about how vitamin D affects the immune system, experts highly recommend taking supplements. It's unlikely that we'll get any major confirmation of the effects of vitamin D on COVID-19 for some time. I think the advice, and certainly I think the UK government are beginning to recognise this, is that the population in the UK as a whole needs to at least be aware of the fact that they could be vitamin D deficient and take action on that, which is going to come from taking supplements. Vitamin D supplements contain D2, which comes from plants, or D3, which is from animals, and they come in many forms, capsules, drops, or sprays. Tablets are likely to be the cheapest option, but all variations should be effective in raising your levels. The big difference comes from the dosage you take. The government recommends everyone should take a 10 microgram dose of vitamin D during the winter months, but you can buy variations containing much more. The problem is that the UK government took a very conservative uh, position on this. They said the level of vitamin D you should be taking is basically to get you to a very low level, but one that would prevent you from getting any really bad effects on bone and calcium and so on. We don't know what is the best level of vitamin D to achieve good protection of your immune system. And until we do that, I think we can't then recommend what level of supplementation to take. But what, what I think people are beginning to recognise is that the level currently recommended by the UK government is just too low. If you want to increase your vitamin D intake past the 10 microgram per day recommendation, the NHS says adults shouldn't exceed 100 micrograms a day as it could be harmful. Children between 1 and 10 years old shouldn't have more than 50 micrograms and babies under 12 months shouldn't have more than 25. Your body should absorb vitamin D from supplements and food without the need for any other supplements. There have been studies linking other vitamins and minerals like vitamin K and zinc to the success of vitamin D's activity in the body. But unlike vitamin D, you should be able to get enough of these from a varied, healthy diet. Vitamin K is found in many foods, including green, leafy veg, meat, fish and eggs. And zinc is found in meat, whole grains and dairy foods. 
For more on supplements and nutrition, as well as loads of other consumer advice and the latest products we've tested, click the link on screen to sign up to our free Buy Smart newsletter. For more advice on how to boost or support your immune system, check out the video below. And for more videos like this, subscribe to the Witch YouTube channel.